Hello, welcome to the European Open Briefing for Monday, June the 4th. I'm Rafi Bajan, currency analyst at XM.com, and we're going to be having a look at what's happening in the currency markets today. The US dollar got a major lift on Friday following a much stronger than expected US jobs report. Uh, the dollar was boosted from that, but uh, its gains were capped uh, by the rising trade tensions between the US and its allies. Uh, risk sentiment although it's also got a boost from the jobs report, uh, that's also uh, somewhat uh, being uh, weighed uh, by those persisting trade risks. The euro though has resumed its rebound uh, and uh, traders will be looking uh, to ECB speakers for further direction. Uh, and in other news, the Australian dollar has jumped to a six-week high following some very upbeat data out of Australia. Let's get started now by tracking, uh, uh, taking a closer look uh, at what's happening with the greenback. We can see dollar yen in orange here uh, has managed to recoup all of last week's uh, losses. Uh, it's currently trading around 109.64 just off uh, its earlier one week high of 109.76. Uh, uh, so we had that strong U.S. jobs report on Friday for the month of May. We saw the U.S. economy adding 223,000 jobs versus forecasts of 188,000. Average hourly earnings also ticked higher from 2.6% to 2.7%. Uh, that was in line uh, with expectations. Uh, and we're seeing uh, overall risk appetite being lifted by that jobs report, which underscores that the U.S. economy remains in good shape. Uh, Wall Street closed higher on uh, Friday by about 1%. Uh, Asian stocks were also mostly higher this morning, and European uh, equities have also opened uh, up as well this morning. Uh, but we do have rising trade tensions. Uh, so over the, over the week, at the weekend, we had the G7 finance ministers uh, failing to reach uh, uh, an agreement uh, on trade. Uh, so all G7 countries, apart from the US, uh, were uh, united in their condemnation against uh, the US decision to impose uh, tariffs. Uh, we also saw there was no breakthrough in, at the latest round of trade talks between China and the US. And China has warned that uh, any agreement uh, that they do reach would become void if the US went ahead uh, with plans to impose tariffs uh, worth up to 50 billion uh, against uh, Chinese uh, products. Uh, let's now have a look at European currencies. Uh, they're having a positive start to the week. The euro is currently trading just above the $1.17 level. Sterling uh, is at one week high, um, currently trading at 1.3373. Uh, the euro is, is attempting to uh, overcome resistance just above the 1.17 uh, level. We can see it re rebounded sharply last week uh, after uh, um, the uh, the crisis in Italy and Spain uh, started to uh, recede. Uh, and, of course, we've got the jobs report overall boosting that risk sentiment, uh, helping both currencies uh, move higher. Uh, we don't have uh, any uh, significant data results out of the Eurozone this week. We will have some German uh, trade and industrial output numbers, uh, but uh, we could see perhaps the most volatility coming from a speech by Mario Draghi uh, on Tuesday, where he will be participating in a panel uh, discussion. Um, so we do have uh, an ECB meeting coming up later in the month. Uh, so perhaps we, we might uh, get some clues as to what to expect uh, from uh, ECB policymakers who are who will be uh, making public appearances uh, this week. If you look at the UK, we had stronger than expected manufacturing PMI last week. That helped sterling to finally um, make a, a more convincing rebound against the US dollar. Uh, if we recall those lows. Uh, earlier uh, last week, around 1.32%. We also had the CBI survey over the weekend showing UK businesses uh, reporting a pickup in output for the month of May. Uh, so that all of that points to um, um, a stronger growth in the second uh, quarter. Uh, but let's not forget the, the Brexit uh, the talks and the EU summit coming up uh, later this month, uh, where the UK has to make up its mind about what to do uh, with the customs union. Uh, we could see more headlines coming on that front and that could possibly derail 
derailed the, UK, uh, the, the pound's uh, recovery. Uh, and finally, let's have a look at the Australian dollar, uh, which has soared to six-week highs. Uh, we had business inventories for the first quarter uh, rising by 0.7%. Uh, forecasts were for just 0.1%. That points to a strong GDP number uh, when we get the first quarter uh, data on Wednesday. Retail sales were up by 0.4% month on month in April. Forecasts were for 0.2%. We also had data on company profits for the first quarter, which showed a big jump uh, during the quarter, as well as um, a big increase in job vacancies for the month of May. So all of that has boosted the Australian dollar, um, but it still remains some distance from the key 0 0.77 level. Uh, so uh, we've got the GTP numbers coming up on Wednesday, and before that, Tomorrow, we're going to have the RBA policy meeting. Uh, they're expected to hold rates at 1.5%, but given the upbeat numbers, perhaps the RBA uh, will sound a bit more optimistic, and that could potentially boost the OZ uh, further. Uh, now, let's have a look at commodities and in oil prices. Uh, we can see here that uh, widening um, spread between WTI and Brent crude. So, Brent, uh, Brent crude has been fairly uh, it's uh, currently trading around $76.82 uh, barrel. It's being supported uh, by the prospect of Saudi Arabia and Russia easing their output restrictions in order to offset falling production in Venezuela and uh, the likelihood of sanctions on Iran. Uh, on the other hand, we've got uh, U.S. output uh, rising further. For the in in March, uh, they it reached a record high, and on Friday we saw the weekly uh, oil rig count showing another increase uh, in U.S. oil rig activity. Uh, uh, and so, uh, despite that, though. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so th that that is weighing on WTI prices, and in in addition to to that, uh, we've got uh, capacity constraints uh, which are restricting uh, the US's uh, ability to export more oil. So that is also weighing WTI, and that's the main reason why we're seeing a WTI uh, falling much more significantly than Brent crude. Uh, and in in fact, uh, WTI has plunged to uh, near two months lows of 65.51. It's currently trading just off those lows at around 65.91. Uh, uh, but we could see uh, support over the coming months uh, coming from expected increase in demand due to uh, the summer season. Uh, and before we go, a quick look at today's economic calendar so we can see the Australian data there. We're going to have UK construction PMI coming up shortly and some Eurozone uh, business surveys, uh, but it's going to be fairly quiet in the US session apart from factory orders. That's it for me. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.